A dashboard is a visual summary of the most important information needed to answer questions about your data, consolidated and arranged on one screen so information can be seen at a glance. Although Excel makes your dashboard interactive, but dynamic arrays will take them to the next level. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to analyze multiple source lists by using dynamic arrays. I will interact with my data by creating controls and visualize it with charts. And finally, we'll assemble my dashboard and test it. We have a lot to learn, so let's get started. This is the source data for my finished file. I have three lists. Each one of the lists corresponds to one of the classes. So I have class 1, class 2, class 3. In each one of the classes, I have a column for the student name. And then I have column for the mass, science, reading, and total score. What I would like to do is to be able to extract four records from any one of the lists based upon the total score. I want the top three scores, or the top four scores, or the top five scores. But that's not all what I want to do. Let's look at the dashboard. In my dashboard, I have a drop list that enables me to switch class. So when I switch to class one, these are the top four scores for class one, as you can read in the label. But I can switch to another class. So if I select class two, these are the top four scores for class two, and here are the student names. If I switch to class 3, that's dynamic, and I can switch to class 3. But what if I want the top three scores? I have a spin control. So if I click on the spin button, I see the top three scores. If I click on the other side, I can see the top five scores. Beyond this chart, there is a powerful dynamic array functionality. So let's see how we build it from ground up in Excel. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below the video. In this worksheet, three classes, I have three lists. I may have more. Each list corresponds to a class. And for each class, I have the student name, the math, science, reading, and total score. Our goal is to be able to select the top three records, four records, five records based upon the total score of a student. And I'm writing the number of records I want to extract in cell V1. And before I create my formula that will extract the records from each one of these classes, I want to create a conditional formatting to highlight the records in the list. So I start with list number three. I'm selecting the whole range. And to create a conditional formatting rule, on the Home tab, I click on Conditional Formatting, and then New Rule. And I want to create a formula that will evaluate the total score and highlight only the top four values based upon my selection in cell V1. What is this formula? So I'm going to click on cell Q4. So from the perspective of the active cell, I'm looking at cell Q4. And because I intend to copy down, and I don't want the column to change, so I hit F4 twice to lock the column but not the row. And then I ask, is it greater than or equal to the large? And I use a large function. The large function requires a range, and I'm selecting the whole range for the total. This is what I'm evaluating. And then I hit comma. And then the second argument, the key value of the large, which large you want, the second large, the third large, the fourth large, I click on cell V1, and then I close the bracket. When the condition is met, a true is returned. What would you like to do? I want to format. So I click on format, and I want to format by changing the fill color. Let's make it orange, and then I hit OK, and another OK, and the four records corresponding to the top four scores are highlighted. I need to repeat the same exact thing and create the same conditional formatting rule for each one of the two other classes. I select the whole range, click on conditional formatting, new rule, and then use formula, and then put my blinking cursor 
where I'll be creating my formula. Select the cell in the top of the total row, F4, F4. Is it greater than or equal than the large? And then I open bracket. I want to select the whole range. I click and drag to select all the range for total. And then I hit comma and click on cell V1. And then I close the bracket. For this table, I want to format in green. So I'll be selecting a green color and I hit OK twice. One final time for class one. Conditional formatting, new rule, and then I want to use a formula, put my blinking cursor, select the top cell in the total row, hit F4 twice, and then ask is it greater than or equal than the large of the entire total column, and then the large requires a K value. The K value is coming from V1, and then I close the bracket. When my rule is met, what would you like to do? Let's select the blue color, and then I hit OK, and another OK, and I finish creating my conditional formatting rule. Now I want to extract the records. So let's build our function step by step. I'm selecting cell T4, and I'm looking for the fourth large value and I'll be creating my first function looking at class number three. So I type an equal sign and I say, what's the fourth large value in the total column of class three? I'm selecting the entire range to evaluate and then I hit comma and I'm in the second argument for the large value, the K value, where I want the fourth large value. So I click on V1 and then I close the bracket and then hit enter. And sure enough, it's extracting the fourth large value from the total column of class number three. But in fact, I don't want to extract the fourth value only. I want to extract the top four scores and get the entire record for each score. So let's see how we do that. I'm going to put my function in the edit mode and I'm going to compare to this entire column to return a column of true and false. So I say, is it less than or equal than any value in this entire column? And now when I hit enter, that will be the first dynamic array behavior in our exercise. When I hit enter, I get a bunch of false and trues. Although I created my function in the top cell, and look at the formula bar, it appears in black. And if I select any other cell, it appears grayed out. That's because a dynamic array function spills to the adjacent cell. I get a bunch of false and true. And if you compare, look at the conditional formatting. Whenever the conditional formatting highlights a record, I have it true. What I would like to do is to filter out all the list for class 3 to extract the entire record based upon my condition, which is the large function that we just created. Let me put my function in the edit mode, F2. And to make it easier for you, I'm going to scoop it out. I'm going to cut all this function, Control x to cut, and I start creating my filter dynamic array function. So I type equal filter, and then I hit tab. What would you like to filter? I want to filter this entire list, and then I hit comma. What would you like to include? Then I'm going to paste my large function. And then I hit comma. What if it's empty? If it's empty, I want nothing. Double quote, double quote, close the bracket. And the second episode of magic will happen right now. And here you go. The top four scores for class three are these ones. I created my function for class 3. I need to create the same exact function for class 2. And I need to create the same exact function for class 1. And I already created these functions and I have them here for you starting from V25 to V27. What I would like to do right now is to be able to switch class by using a drop list in cell S1. And when I switch the class, the records extracted by the dynamic array update to reflect my selection. I want to be able to switch class by using a data validation list in cell S1. 
and when I change my selection in cell S1, the dynamic array functions reflect my selection and extract the number of students specified in cell V1. How can I do that? I'm going to wrap the three filter functions that you see in V25 to V27. I'm going to wrap them in a switch function. And to make it easier for you and me, I created the functions and I'm going to copy them to the clipboard. Let's open the clipboard. I'm going to clear whatever I have. And then I want to copy number three and click on copy. Select the second filter function and copy. And select the first filter function for class one and copy. Now I have the three filter functions available to use in my clipboard. Before I use them in a switch function, I want to create my drop list. Let's go to cell S1 and create our drop list. To create a drop list, I go to the data tab of the ribbon and then click on data validation. And here, I'm going to create a list. So I click on the down arrow for allow and select a list. And I put my blinking cursor in the source and go and grab the three classes. I already have them in column U and then hit OK. Let's check the drop list. If I click, I have class 2, nothing happens. If I click and select class 3, nothing happens. That's why I want to create my switch function. Let me delete everything. But before I delete, I want to show you, if you have any value along the way as a barrier or an obstacle, my dynamic array function will fail. So if I type my name in one of the cells, I get a spill error. And Excel is simply telling me, well, I'm unable to spill the function because I have an obstacle. If you delete this obstacle, I'll be working just fine. If you want to delete the range, you just need to delete the main function, which is in the upper left corner. So if I hit delete, I would have removed all the dynamic array functions from the range. Let's recreate our function in a switch function. What does the switch function do? It's another dynamic array function, equal switch. And then I hit tab. The switch function will look at cell S1, my drop list, and it will evaluate the condition. So I type comma. If my drop list is returning class 1, then I want the filter function corresponding to class 1. So let me write my first condition in double quotes, double quote, class 1, double quote, and then I hit comma. If my condition is class 1, what would you like to do? Well, I want the filter function. So I go to the Home tab, I want to open the clipboard, and I'm going to paste my first filter function. And then I hit Come. What if the drop list is returning class 2? So in double quotes, I type class 2, and then I hit Comma. If it's returning class 2, then I'm going to paste the second filter function, and then I hit Comma. What if it is returning class 3? In this case, I want the last filter function. So the switch function looks at cell S1, my drop list. My drop list has three options. If it returns class 1, then I go with the first filter function. Class 2, I go with the second filter function. Class 3, I go with the third filter function. Let me close the bracket for the switch function and then hit enter. And I was able to extract the top four scores for class 3. Let's see how dynamic it is. I'm going to close my clipboard for now and then let me switch from my drop list. So if I select class 1, that's beautiful, that's dynamic. If I select class 2, I get the top four scores from class 2. And that's excellent. But let me improve it a little bit. Let me wrap all these functions in a sort function, which is another dynamic array function that will organize my records based upon the total score in an ascending order. Let me put my function in the edit mode by hitting F2. And then I click before the switch function and I type sort. And then I hit tab. The sort function requires an array and all the bunch of functions represent the first argument for the sort function. I hit comma, and then what's the sort index? Well, I want to sort based upon the total column. This is column number five, so I type five, 
and then I hit comma. I want to sort ascending, so I'll be typing 1, and then I close the bracket for the sort function. When I hit enter, look at that, I have my records sorted in an ascending order based upon the total score for each student. And now, let's test what if I change the value in V1, I just want three records, so when I hit enter I'm extracting three records, and then what if I want five, when I hit enter I'm extracting five records. And that's wonderful. Now let's create a chart to represent these values in a column chart. And that's very easy. To create a column chart, let me reduce the value in cell V1, and I'll make it four for now, and we'll make it a lot more dynamic later on. Now I want to create my column chart. I select the list of names, the four names, I press Ctrl and select the four scores, and to create my default chart, I hit Alt F1. A chart is created for me, and I want to improve the appearance of my chart, and because I know that I'll be changing some elements, and then I'll be adding a style, so let's go and add the style right away. I click on the down arrow of the chart styles, and let's create this style. And now let's improve the appearance of our chart. I'll make it a little bigger. I don't want the vertical axis, so I select it and hit delete. I don't want the horizontal grid lines, so I select them and then hit delete. I want to reduce the gap between the columns, so I click on one of the columns and then hit Control 1 to open the Format Data Series pane. Here is a gap with slider. I can drag it a little bit to the left, so as to reduce the gap. I also want to change the color of each one of these columns, and to do that I click on the Fill bucket, and then expand the Fill option by clicking on the right pointing triangle, and from here I select Vary Colors by Point, and each one of the columns appears in a different color. Let me create a dynamic title. So to create a dynamic title I have to prepare for that. So in cell X1 I'll be creating my dynamic title, by typing an equal sign, and I would like to combine multiple pieces together, so I type an equal sign, and then in double quotations, I type top, space, and double quote, and I want to join it, so I hit Shift 7 on my keyboard, the end symbol, I want to grab the value from cell V1, and then another joining operator, Shift 7 on my keyboard, and I want to join it to some text, so I type the top four scores in, and a space, and then double quote, and then I want to join, I want to grab the value coming from the drop list. Let's understand this function. I type the text top, I'm joining it to the number coming from cell V1, and then I'm typing the text scores in, and then I'm joining it to the value coming from S1, which is my drop list. And now let's hit enter. I created the top four scores in class 2. I guess I need to add a little space, so I hit F2, and then I add a little space before the S. That will be much better. Now let's join it to the chart. So I click on the chart title, hit the F2 key on my keyboard, type an equal sign, and then click on cell X1, and I would have created a dynamic title. If I change my selection for the class from cell S1, if I select class 1, now everything is dynamic. I still need to make some improvements to my chart. Number one, when I click on the chart, I don't want it to move or expand when I expand the columns, so I'm going to click on the properties, the size and properties icon in the format chart area pane, and then for the properties, I'll be selecting don't move or size with cells. I also want to bevel and add labels, so to add labels, I click on the chart element button in the upper right corner of my chart, and from here I'll be selecting labels, data labels, and the data labels are a little bit small in size, so on the home tab I can bump them up, and then I can make them bold, that will make them easier to read, and I'll do the same for the horizontal axis, the category axis, the student names, I'll bump it up, and then I'll make it bold, I'm almost done. One more thing I would like to do, I don't need the Format Data Series pane, so I'm going to close it. I click on one of the columns, go to the Format tab, and to make it look nice, I'm going to add a shape effect. I go to Bevel, and I want to bevel my columns, and that looks nice. 
My chart is ready to move to the dashboard, but I still have a little thing to do. Let me test changing the number. So what if I select the top scores and then I say I want 5 instead of 4. Let me move this one down a little bit to see my dynamic array functions. What happens when I change it to 5? Well, when I hit enter, my dynamic array functions are working just fine, but my chart is not picking up the extra record. And in order to be able to make this dynamic, I need to create some defined names. My chart is always picking up four records because I was selecting four records when I created my chart. If I change the number in V1, the chart does not respond to my selection. So I want to make it more dynamic, so I'll be creating two defined names by using offset functions. How to create defined names? To create a defined name, I can go to the Formulas tab of the ribbon and click on Define Name. Alternatively, I can use the shortcut Control alt f3 and here I need to give it a name so I'll be creating a defined name for the names I'll be creating another defined name for the total let me call the first one my names and then this one refers to all the names and to refer to all the names I need to create a function that stores an expandable range this function is the offset function and the offset function consists of two parts. The first three arguments are part one. They specify the starting point. So I type equal offset. And then I open bracket. The offset function that will store the names will start from cell T4. And then the second and third argument are simply how many rows up and down how many columns right and left would you like to move the start point? I don't want to move it, so I type comma zero, comma zero. And then I hit comma. The next argument, which is the height of this range, I want to include all the names. So how can I count all the names? I can count them with a count a function. The count a function counts none blanks. So I'll be typing count a, and then I open bracket and I select the entire column T. And because the entire column T will count all the student names, but it will also count the column header name, then I'll be closing the bracket for the count A function, and I'll type minus one to include the header. I still have one more argument, so I hit comma. And how many column will be the width of this range? It's one single column. So I type one, and I close the bracket, and I hit OK for the defined name. Let me create the second one and test both of them. To create a defined name, on the formula tab, I click on Define Name or use the shortcut Control alt f 3 I'm going to name the second one my total. And then it will be another offset function, equal offset. And I open bracket, the offset function will start in cell x4 and then comma 0 comma 0 0 rows up and down 0 columns right and left and then I want to count how many values I have in this case because the totals are numbers I can use a count function so I type count open bracket select the entire column x and because any text is excluded by default by the count function so I don't need to subtract anything I type comma 1 for the width and then I close bracket and I would have created my defined names. Before using them in my chart, I need to test them. So I go to the name manager on the formula bar and then I want to test them. So if I put my blinking cursor in the refers to box in the name manager, now look at the range named my name is recognizing the range. What if I move it to the side and select the second one? put my blinking cursor to test and that's fine it's recognizing the range let me change this number and make it four and let's test one more time I go to name manager and then put my blinking cursor in the refers to box and it recognizes the range so it's an expandable range it can expand it can shrink and that's wonderful I'm going to go ahead and use it in my chart 
I click on the chart, and then I go to the chart design and click on select data. Instead of hard coding the data, I want to make it dynamic, so I'll be using my defined name. For the category axis, I click on edit, and here I want to delete everything. I want to delete the reference up to the exclamation mark. Do not delete the exclamation mark. And here, what would you like to do? I don't remember the name of the range, so I hit F3, the helping key of Excel, and this corresponds to the name, so I select it and hit OK, and then I hit OK, and I'm done. I want to edit the other range, so I click on Edit, and here I want to select the totals. Don't forget, we need to delete the reference, we need to delete this range up to the exclamation mark, but do not delete the exclamation mark. And here I hit F3 another time, and select my total, and hit OK, and here is the updated range. Let's hit OK, and now everything should be dynamic. Let's test. What if I select five students? When I hit five and then hit Enter, keep an eye on the dynamic array functions. Keep an eye on the number of columns. When I hit Enter, everything is dynamic. What if I select three? Now, if I select three and then hit enter, I get three columns. I extract the three records. What if I change the class? I click on the down arrow and select two. Now I see even my label, top three scores in class two, and that's wonderful. We are almost ready to move this chart to the dashboard. But am I going to switch to this worksheet every time I need to change the number of scores or I need to switch the class? No, I need to create this drop list in the dashboard worksheet, and I need to create a functionality that changes this by using a control. Let's go and create the control. To create a control that I'll be using for changing the number of top scores, I do that by clicking on the Developer tab of the ribbon. If you don't have the Developer tab, then right-click on any tab, select Customize the ribbon, and check the box for Developer tab. And because I do have the Developer tab, I click on it, click on the down arrow in the Controls group where it says Insert. I want to insert a Spin button, so I'll be selecting Spin button. I click and drag to create the Spin buttons. I resized my Spin button, and I want to control the properties of the Spin button, so I click on Properties. In the dialog box that opens, I want to set a minimum value, I'll set it to 1. I want to set a maximum value for the spin button, I'll set it to 10, and I want to link it to a cell. So for the cell link, I want to link it to cell V1 in my worksheet. If I keep it the way it is, where you see V1, when I cut it and move it to the dashboard, it won't work. Why? Because it doesn't have the worksheet name. So before V1, I want to bring the worksheet name. So I click on Dashboard. It's not in the dashboard worksheet, so I click again on three classes. Now I can see the worksheet name and the exclamation mark. I can click on V1, and that will be OK. Let's hit OK and test. Now it says the top first score. No, I want more, so I click on the up pointing arrow. Now I'm increasing three scores, four scores. Look at that. My dynamic array functions are working fine, and at the same time, my chart is responding and reflecting my selection. If I switch the class one last time, now if I select class one, I have the top four scores from class one. We are almost ready to move everything to assemble our dashboard. So I select my chart and then Control X and move it to the dashboard. Let's say I move it here to cell A3 and Control V. I can resize it. I can make it a little bigger if I want, and then I want to create my drop list that will switch the class. I want to create my drop list in cell A1, so I can go to the data tab and click on data validation. Alternatively, I use the shortcut Alt D L, tab L tab. Now I have my blinking cursor in the source box, and I have my values in three classes worksheet, so I go there and here are the three options for my drop list, and there I hit OK. Let me select an option, class 1, and that's wonderful. 
But if I select class 2, nothing changes, nothing updates, because in fact I have to link it to cell S1 in three classes. How do I do this? Let's go to three classes and then go to cell S1, and I want to clear everything in this cell, so I can go to the Home tab, click on the down arrow and select Clear All. I can also use the data validation drop list to remove the drop list, but any one of the techniques work. Here I'm going to type an equal sign, and I want to refer to cell A1 in the dashboard. So if I click on the dashboard, and then I get this message box, don't worry about it. Type A1 in the formula bar and then hit enter. Let's close the message box and test. I go to the dashboard, and then I want to select class 1 everything is dynamic. If I select class 2, it's dynamic. If I select class 3, it's dynamic as well. The final thing is to bring the spin buttons here. So I go to three classes. To select the spin buttons before triggering them, I press the control key and click, and then control X to cut, and then go back to the dashboard and then paste my spin buttons. So I'll be pasting Control V, and then I'm going to reposition them in the upper right corner of my chart. Now we are ready to test the functionality of the first part of our dashboard. If I switch the class, let's say select class 1, if I change the class to class 3, I see the names of the students, I see their scores on the column chart, and then I can change the number to 3, I can increase it to 4, 5, or whatever I want, and everything is working just fine. In this tutorial, we had a lot of fun. We started from lists, we created some conditional formatting, and then we created a bunch of dynamic array functions. I created a large function. I created a filter function, and then I put them in a switch function, and then I wrapped everything in a sort function. We created data validation list, and then we created controls. We defined names, and we used the defined names as source data for our chart, and then we assembled our dashboard by moving the different elements to the dashboard worksheet. We tested everything before sharing it. I can continue building the other visualization. In another tutorial, I'll show you how we continue building our dashboard, how we can extract the average score and compare the three classes, the maximum, the minimum. How can I get a list of the different students just by switching from a drop list? A dependent drop list updates, and automatically I can extract all the scores for the related student. I can even analyze the math, the science, and reading by changing the function from average to minimum to maximum. We'll be covering that in future tutorial. If you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching and see you next time.